to remain on stage as Alibaba and a huge number of dollars, ladies and gentlemen. For Chief Minister for the 2040. Roma, here we go. Santa, only Hame Patrikea, Sampatuanta Shant Kumarore, Li, Matna Nubundurunta, Yella, Dignitaries, or a Dr. Shetty or Dr. Bala or a Matu, Ella Gane, Ili Nelthurunta, Ella Protestita, Goronita Gane, Anatamunda Katangere, Majorse. You have put me in a spot. Me being Bangalore Minister, tackling a whole lot of issues on day-to-day -day basis, and knowing all the problems and all the growth issues very well. But being in government, I can't be very candid enough, which I want to. But however, the Kannan has given me opportunity, given me a platform to express not only my concern, my futuristic plans. This is a concern and futuristic plan of uh, many people whom I have consulted in the last seven months, who love Bangalore, who are expert in town planning, expert in different subjects, and uh, people with great experience, former administrators. Therefore, it is a collective sum of opinions which I am going to express. Basically, if you want to know the future, you should know the history of a city. The history of a city will define the organic content of the city. Once the organic content is known, then the path to growth can be decided. Bangalore, which was founded by the a great uh, ruler, Kempegoda, had its own unique planning. And he chose Bangalore probably because, because of its uh, natural resources, almost 3,000 feet above sea level, a beautiful climate. Then series and series of lakes, and uh, most resourceful soil and it was uh, a great plan where he demarked the boundaries of a city. This is very important. Very few cities have the demarcation. That's why the growth is unplanned and growth, growth is non-friendly natural resources. Hence a big strain on the city in terms of resources, in terms of livelihood, we have seen it. Probably we wish now that we have to explore now, what is the core Bangalore? What is the add-on Bangalore? There are two add-on Bangalores. The core Bangalore, as you know, the, the entire old city, 
then came central district then came eight new eight municipalities amalgamating with the city now 110 villages are now joined to the city so whenever there is amalgamation of different uh, entities in uh, municipalities and things they come along with all their problems so they add on to the Bangalore municipal problems. Secondly, the synchronized, uh, synchronizing these two entities is very difficult in terms of roads, in terms of your UGD, in terms of your open canals, in terms of water supply. It's a huge task. Therefore, we have got multi-situation and multi uh, facilities in the city. You don't have one unique water supply plan. You don't have one unique road plan. This is what we have inherited already. Now, in spite of all this, we are trying to bring back the Bangalore planning on track. I know that it's a big challenge, but somebody has to take challenge. Enough has been discussed, enough has been printed, enough has been told in the TV channels. We all discuss the problems, but we never discuss the solution of it. I feel that no discussion is complete without formulating the solution. Problems anybody can say and uh, tell the world. Magnitude of the problems can be discussed, so many things can be discussed. But being a part of a solution and the solution which can be implemented in reality, that is a good planner and a good administrator will do. So when I took over as a Bangalore minister, of course, I was a chief minister also. That came to my advantage. I saw that there have been attempts to improve the systems, not that they never attempted it. But the attempts were not really holistic. They were not really planned properly. And even some of them planned properly, implementation was an issue. So I said to my people that whichever is achievable first, low hanging fruits, that has to be done. We have to set a confidence in the people that somebody is there now thinking about the city and trying to do something, fixing the problems. And if this confidence is there, then a lot of things can be done. That's what initially we have tried to do it. Secondly, Bangalore has got the largest floating population. People from different parts of the nation come here, they work here, settle down here. Now, they are outnumbering the localities. That's not the issue. The issue is, owning a proper city. So those who come outside, they come because Bangalore is a better place than any other metropolitan in the country. You take Chennai, you take Calcutta, you take Delhi, you take even Bombay. So all the people, all the business houses, all the corporates are shifting here. A lot of people think that uh, Bangalore is IT capital, technological capital. But slowly it has become financial capital also. Let us see. You have to remember that. So when the, all these people come, the big question mark is the ownership. So unless until all the citizens own up a city, you don't expect a magic. It can be on the paper. But to be have on a ground reality, it's very different. 
For example, there is one drain near uh, Madhwala and Gormangla. It's an open drain. And huge amount of dirt is put there. It's one of the major Raj Khalvi. We clean it up almost every alternate day, but the amount of all the waste which comes on daily basis, in spite of educating all, all the people there, is so much that it is going to choke somewhere out there. Every day you clean and every day it chokes because the new wastage is added every day. I am just giving a small example. So unless until people participation is there, it's very difficult. Building Bengaluru is one thing, infrastructure is second thing. But services, third thing. But certain essential services, like a UGD, like a open drain, like a drinking water, power supply, roads. These are the most important things where citizens experience every day. So we have to categorize the Bangalore growth. I know that you gave me 2040, I'll come to that later. Let us first see ourselves how we are on 2022. What's the baseline? For a growth, we should have a baseline. And what kind of baseline we have? So some serious thought is necessary. In a nutshell, I want, just want to share, I don't want to elaborate. We need a strong, vibrant Bangalore Civic Society. Unless until a strong Civic Society which uh, thinks of the problems of the city as a whole, problems with the citizens of the city as a whole, and comes out with solution and interact with all the agencies, government, and participate in problem solving, in development, a responsible civil society is the essence of Bangalore. If that can be achieved, that will be a motivating factor, that will be the catalyst to drive all the agencies. Some people have tried that right? and they have done it very sincerely, but uh, a kind of uh, cynicism which has grown over the years has not really increased them. And second is, uh, there is, even though we have elected bodies, everything. The different strata of people in Bangalore, people who live, live in a very, very deep slum, where it is so pathetic, to the icons, a different strata of people. Now, even in a vertical ladder, we are disconnected. We are disconnected horizontally, we are disconnected vertically. So there is a need for connect. One responsible civil society and a connect among the different strata of people, which will bring some kind of a consolation in the lives of the people from the lower strata. Having said this, that probably there must be a question in all your minds. What is the solution for this and what you are doing? We are trying to set right the roads, basically the trains. 12 high density corridors have been identified. It had gone to a rough weather and there were some uh, irregularities. So I have asked them to redo the whole thing with legal, completely legally. I don't want any irregularities 
illegal things in the name of development. Uh -huh. So I am setting it right and once these 12 corridor roads are ready, it will be a seamless signal where the major traffic which comes out from a major metropolis like Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad, when they come into the city, there will be proper monitoring and proper guidance as well as the seamless signals. We will see that easily, easy flow of a heavy traffic. If that is taken care, then our RTL and sub-RTL roads can be managed the better way than what it is now. Because we see that uh, four axle truck with uh, 16 wheels walking in front of Deccan around MG Road and we see in front uh, just beside the Gun Sauda. The roads are designed for something else and the load which takes is something else. So we have to have certain road plan is different, traffic plan is different. So we are I'm going to have a traffic plan for the city. The right right kind of movement should be there on the right roads and the road should be designed in such a way where that kind of a road can be taken. Second major thing is to avoid the major uh, influx of traffic. I have already decided and this is going to be tender. This is also a long winding peripheral ring road. But now we have cleared and we are going to tender very soon. This will, the nice road has taken one portion of it. The next portion connecting uh, the other portion from uh, ball to the next, up to the Mysore road, all around, that will be taken up. If that is done, then a lot of traffic, which doesn't, it naturally comes into the city, can be avoided. The next step I have gone, there is something called Satellite Town Ring Road, STR, and that comes from Devanali, all around, and it, it goes joins to the Mysore. So STRR, I had a very great big discussion with the government of India and uh, we have agreed for certain concessions with the government of India was seeking some extra concessions in terms of tax consumptions, exemptions and other things. I have agreed in principle. Shortly, we are going to have an agreement with the government of India and STRR is going to commence this year. And the third thing is this major water drainages which causes floods every heavy rain, especially in the low-lying areas. The entire length is around 800 kilometers. 400 has been done, 400 has to be done. That 400 we are taking up this year with 1500 crores. DPR is getting ready and we are going to take this year itself. That will take care of floods during heavy rains. And the fourth more important is sewage treatment, waste management. Waste management is the greatest challenge. Every day we produce 5,000 tons of waste. So imagine how to manage the waste. All the queries in and around dumping queries are getting filled up. And we are paying heavy money for that. Transportation heavy. So I am coming out with a new plan and uh, this is totally citizens oriented. Because we, we generate waste, we have to handle part of the waste system. You can't say that it's, it's a municipal bodies. But we, because we generate. Every citizen generates. So we should have, individuals should have some control in generating the waste. Not that waste will not be generated, but you can reduce it. One really thinks that if you think in, in, a, in a day, what all activity you do, you can reduce 5%, 10%, 20% of the waste we produce. Second day is, now there is a lot of technology has come and uh, from uh, 100 kg to 2 tons of waste treatment plant can be installed 
in all the commercial establishments, hospitals, kalyana mandapams, big restaurants, shopping malls, everywhere. Where it will be, even the wet is treated there only. And it produces a manure and you can have a Bangalore brand manure. And I have asked agriculture department, horticulture department to consume this. This we are going to start very shortly. And I will make it compulsory for all commercial establishment to have this in it. As we have generators now. Vidyana Muttu Tantra Dhyana Laila Ke Karnataka Raja Vidyana Muttu Tantra Dhyana Mandali Oti Inda Kudu Vanta Visheshu Vangiru Vanta Yam Visheshuraya Dr. Raja Raman C.V. Raman Satish Dhawan Agu Dr. Kalpana Chala Chala Avara Vidyana Muttu Engineering Raja Prasasti Pradana Da E Samara Mandali Gaga Vishiru Vanta Nana Atmiyaru Sachiwa Samputra Savadhu Gulu Science, Technology, IT, BT Mantri Gulu Adhanta Unnatu Sikshana Mantri Gulu Adhanta Dr. Ashwad Naranavya Hagu Prof. A.S. Kiran Kumar Adhikshar Prasishti Aikya Samiti Sri Prof. Goindan Raja Rangraja Nauri Nidhishakru Bharti Vidyana Samasthe Hagu नमेलर स्पूर्ति नमेलर प्रेरणे इन्हीं भारत देह में भारत रत्ना प्रोफेसर सेन राव औरे मतु रिजवान अर्शद औरे रमना रेड्डी औरे अशोक रेचुर औरे प्रशस्ति के बाजी ड्राइवर बनता ये ला गणे ले मतु ये ला ने ना अन्नत बजरे के तंगेरे इली सभी लोग आगे सुनता विज्ञान और जगत ने ला गणेरे माध्यम से साइंस इज़ ऑल अबाउट एक्सप्लोरिंग थिंग्स एक्सप्लोरिंग थिंग्स विच आर एक्जिस्टेंट and exploring things which are not existent. And uh, even though we have got several institutions which are working very hard for scientific development, but the fact of the matter is science the exploration, the experiment, the research, scientific magic which has been created all along is centered around the individual. A individual talent makes a difference. For one simple reason, a group of people can work together for a cause. But once that purpose is served, the convergence of energy which is there in achieving the purpose, once that is achieved, to handle that purpose, the energy is diversified in different directions. But in the individual, it's a single-minded pursuitness which will really go to the logical end of the exploration. That's why you find the great scientific revelations are done by an individual, right from uh, Einstein to a Newton, to Lewis Pasteur, Thomas Alva Edison, you name, you name any field. It is they, these great people have explored, experimented and brought in a great change in the development of human race. And one person can inspire 
and inspiration within a person with great deal of honesty, integrity and sense of purpose is infinite. That's all that all these great souls have done. And we are lucky today. We are very much lucky that we have got one such scientist, one such, such great human being, one such soul that is here now among us. He is a source of inspiration. He is a source of inspiration through his uh, scientific research and uh, exploration in different fields and a proud Kannadiga, a man who has built institutions, a man who has inspired the individuals. He is a modern Vishweshwarya who has created scientific ecosystem in the entire country, more so in Karnataka. Therefore, nations are built by such few, by such few individuals who are visionaries, who think ahead, who have a great leadership qualities to take it forward, and a great human being to use it for a human development cause. And that's all science is all about. What is the ultimate goal of a science and science development in science? It is a betterment of human life. The human species are one of the finest creation of a creator. Everyone must realize this. We belong to such a great species. We just stood the test of time, test of adversaries. Still, we go on. Before us, there were creations which were 10 times, 25 times bigger than us, stronger than us. Even now, we have creations where they run 10, 20 times speed by us. But this species life extension is coming. They are almost there. It's only the human being race has got such a long state of existence and he continues to exist. Probably, probably the human race is the last this last species. And after this, there will be no species. That's the end of our creation. Why? It's one simple characteristic. The adaptability of a human being. He can live in a palace, he can live in a very small house, he can live in a pipe. He can live in a Sahara desert with 44 degrees, 46 degrees temperature. He can live in Arctic Circle where minus 42, minus 44 degrees temperature. The adaptability which he has, no other species has. Therefore, he lives in jungle, he lives in plains, wherever it is there. The art of survival. Hence, the responsibility on us is much more because of the longevity of existence. We have to create this world a better living day by day. The previous generation has given up beautiful natural resources, human resources, and their research, and the research products. There was a time when there was no science. 
but still scientific bent of thinking was there. It had not been a structure like this. They say it is first Aksharadhana, then Jnana, then Vidyana, then Tantra Jnana, then Tantra Shana. This is the evolution of knowledge. And future is much more to come. Therefore, it is a responsibility of every citizen to see that at least we don't damage the great existence product like natural resource and human resource which our forefathers have given. At least we should not create any damage. If you don't, you can't add. At least don't create a damage. But what we are doing, what's a fact? The ecological imbalance is so much. Here is a study that whatever the ecological damages has been done in, till 2000, the same quantity of ecological in the air, water, natural resources, Damages has been done in 20 years. What was done in 2000 years, we have done in 20 years. That is the first phase of ecological damages which are done. We have to realize certain fundamentals. Now, this ecological damages, why it has been done? See, we do things, lot of things without, without really trying to know about it. Sometimes we do it innocently, sometimes we need it for, do it for the need, sometimes we do it for the greed. The greatest ecological damage is done by a microscopic taste buds on our tongue. The microscopic taste buds on our tongue will decide the what kind of food you should have and to prepare that food, what kind of facilities, fire is necessary, oil is necessary, so many things. The food chain starts. And food chain will consume forest, will consume everything which comes in the way. Hence, the ecological damage is within us. So we have to be very, very careful. Growth has to come. We have to eat good food. But everything has to be done as per minimum needs. A sustainable growth and a sustainable consumption can only save this earth. But for it, it's just impossible. The, the, the damage is very fast. That's why I have first time in the country I have discussed this in my budget and I have said we are going to quantify the ecological deficit in a year and we will budget it to minimum ecological loss is done and we will budget every year some money to compensate that. that that's why I have given eco budgeting or a green budget. I have given 100 crores. Science is a part of human being. Scientific thinking is a nature of human being. But you want to have something extraordinary, you have to think out of the box. No situation should stop us from doing great things which can help the human mankind. Nothing can stop us. We should have that kind of a will. 
wisdom and that guts to do it. Most of the good things in this world can be done not by the popular way. People will criticize. And through my experience, I am telling something you want to do good and people don't criticize, then probably you are not being good enough. Because you have to disturb the present system to create a new system. So the challenge before the present scientist is that the original scientific development now has changed. It's more of an application, application scientific development. Therefore, the applications should be very, very carefully crafted. There is a saying that crime leads a law. Nowadays, about 10 years back, we never heard of cyber law because there are no cyber crimes. Now there is a cyber crime, that's why you have got a law. So my appeal to the scientific uh, world is that you should be ahead of all these crimes and create whatever you want to create in any field. See that the criminality doesn't overtake us. The ingenuity should be the proprietary of a saner scientific people. That is one thing is very necessary. And as far as Karnataka is concerned, my minister has expressed everything. We are here to support any scientific development in any field. We have got some platforms, need be, we will create more platforms where interaction between scientific world and the students, and the, and the industries, and the institutions. The Avishkar should reach the common man. At least the common man should be benefited of Avishkars. That is the goal of our government. And second goal is, the research and development is a continuous process. It's a continuous process. It's a never-ending process. The urge to achieve better is a very natural thing for a human being. And